I figure that's probably the least that I can do for them working up on a roof in 100 degree weather all this week. So week two, the full week two, I guess I should say, is starting today. And they've made so much progress already last week. Of course, the hope is, I believe that Paul said, that hopefully the roof metal is going to go on this week. So that would be nice. Then they could start working underneath that somewhat, some of the time, at least have some shade over there to get out of this extreme heat that we're having. As far as I saw in the forecast for the next 10 days or so, it's mostly gonna be upper 90s. Working on top of a roof with a bunch of metal is not gonna be the most fun, but they're gonna try to get done as much as they possibly can this week. The metal for the roof had arrived and the suspense of seeing the color in person for the first time was about to end. Morning. Morning, guys. Hey, Ryan. But before the metal could go on, a few more trusses needed to be put into place. It's hard on an old man's knees. Is there ice in here now? I got you guys a little present. Thanks, that is good stuff. <laughs> Figured the ice might help today. Oh, yeah. It's just so still out today. I know. Hard to hang, no, no cloud cover. Just a few hours later, all the trusses except the final one were in place just as the breeze began to pick up. Paul secured straps to keep the building in place as much as possible so the metal work could begin. I feel like that's good right there, Dad. All right, let's grab our straps and put this last truss up. It's hard enough to move a 56 foot wide truss, but the wind certainly was not helping in this case. Well, it's supposed to be about 105 heat index today. It's midday right now, but you can also tell it's much more windy today, so that's at least helping in some ways with the heat, but not so much in terms of putting up the last truss. So I just was watching them put up the last truss back there. Now we have a fully boxed in structure and you can actually get a sense of the size of it and everything like that. So pretty cool to see. Yeah. I was actually the fifth windiest state in the country in case you didn't know. I have been interested to see the gray color. As Paul got ready to place the metal on a little homemade contraption he built to be able to slide the panels directly onto the roof, the other guys finished the fascia board. Well, this should be the last time that I'm standing underneath just the trusses with no roof metal on. I just thought I'd come over here and do a final shot of that. It's, it's weird how all these stages go by and you don't think about some of the things that you won't see again. This will just be the only time I'll see this. So thought I'd just do a quick moment on that, but getting ready to put the metal on here pretty soon. Seven and eight. What does it need to be? Seven and 11, 16. All right, try to take a little off. Sitting at seven and a half. Still seven and a half. Seven and, yeah. Oh, too much. That's five. Five eighths. So we're right there. Yep, we're right there. That wind's just bouncing it between an eighth, so. That's fine. I mean, that's that's pretty big close. So we'll just leave that there, and that should get us started square. Once you guys get that up there, Cash, you can sit up there, and then when I push and pull, you can tell them in the lines, even with the safety board. In today's edition of Paul Always Finds a Way, he's using the skid steer and chains to help hold the building square while the roof metal is put into place. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. And remember that metal holder he built? He was now loaded with roof metal and ready to go. So we 
might have to cut some of the first panel off so I have enough flat area for that trim to come over. Right. Let's go check that. I'm going to have to rip some off to be sure. Cut it. We'll put some 2x4s uh, across that. And then we'll set this on top of there. Paul pulled the first piece of metal onto the roof and scaled quickly to the top when a gust of wind was trying to lift the pile of metal and send it flying. Jake held it in place while Paul tried to quickly secure the first sheet on the roof. Just too windy? If not this one, which, whatever, I always, I always get one extra piece. So I just don't like to use that one extra piece right off the bat. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of an intense moment there for a minute. I looked down in Jake's face and he was like. <laughs> Seems like the wind didn't pick up till probably noon. What time is it now? It's two o'clock. Almost half tempted to just. It call it a day and bit. get here at like uh, right at daylight because yeah. we could have this whole side on in less than probably two hours and then get on the other side. Well, I guess I'll go home, get a little done at home and be out here at break of day. As we've discussed before, early mornings do not agree with me. So by the time I arrived the next day, one side of the roof was already complete. Yeah, just holler at me if the wind starts taking it. Paul, and I'll try to jump out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you might oh. as well keep ducking. Over the side of the building. If you've ever wondered how to keep your legs in shape, this would probably be it. The color that we picked for the roof is simply charcoal, and I think it turned out great. Later that afternoon, a crop duster was flying right above the building, scoping out the progress. By the end of the day, we had a completed roof. Not only did it start to give us a sense of what the completed building will look like, but it also provided one very important thing for the work that's to come in this blazing sun. And don't worry, our porch talks will be back in the next episode.